Joining us now is Ken Klippenstein. Uh, he uh, was Washington um, reporter for The Nation and uh, of course was with us at the Young Turks here, uh, but he's now a reporter for The Intercept. Uh, Ken, welcome back, brother. Hey, good to be with you, Jake. Yep. Uh, all right, uh, Kenny Clips, I want to run the IRS story by you. Uh, ProPublica broke a story that we uh, talked about yesterday on the show um, where uh, they found the tax returns for the 25 richest men in America. And they looked at them for about a dozen years or so and found out they're not paying very much taxes at all. Um, now, uh, the Biden administration had a reaction, um, which since they want to raise taxes on the rich, theoretically, you would think like, yeah, look at that, right? Um, no, of course, the reaction was, let's crush the person who leaked this. So um, what's your reaction to their reaction? Well, unfortunately, this reminds me of a lot of other cases of um, whistleblowers. And I should make clear that we don't know exactly uh, where this came from. But uh, this pattern of responding to a disclosure that is of great interest to the public in saying, you know, the real scandal here isn't what was disclosed, it was that it was disclosed. And so um, the IRS made a statement uh, within hours of the story uh, going live saying, we're gonna find out who did this, we're gonna get to the bottom of this. Um, and so it really gives you a sense of their priorities. Uh, and by the way, IRS is an agency that itself uh, has you know, essentially said in the past, uh, you know, we don't have the resources to enforce tax law against everyone. So uh, you know, we're gonna go after uh, poorer and working people because it's cheaper and more effective for our limited resources to do that. But um, you know, lo and behold, they have the resources to immediately announce that they're going to go after this whistleblower again within hours of this story coming out. So it's very clear where their priorities are. Yeah. So um, on the other hand, it is an interesting question, right? So um, your taxes are among the most private things. These folks are not running for office, uh, and if the, uh, somehow your taxes leak from the IRS, that would actually be a scandal, right? That would be wrong. Um, and so, and these 25 are the richest 25 in the country, but they are private citizens. So as a reporter though, and an investigative reporter, how do you feel about a leak like that? Yeah, I think it's good to ask these questions of ethics. Um, I often find myself asking this, you know, does this person's prominence in the public sphere justify uh, writing about them? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think there's any hard and fast rules, but I imagine that looking at individuals like billionaires who themselves, you know, have as much collective wealth as you know, a huge portion of uh, the working population in this country. There's a balancing act. I know in in news media legally, uh, wherein you have to establish that someone is a public figure, and you know, in that case, uh, it's kind of looking at you know how much relative power does this individual have? Is this person extremely famous? Are they an elected official? Are they you know extraordinarily wealthy? And um, it, the sort of uh, test. That the courts have established is, you know, if they're uh, sufficiently public and sufficiently powerful, then uh, you know, if it, it if it's enough in the public interest to find out what's going on here. Which, by the way, that's one of the scandals here is that all of this stuff is happening in secret. If you want to learn about the government, you know, I can criticize the government all day long, but I can at least find out about it from the Freedom of Information Act. Um, you know, there's a there's an assumption at least of transparency. None of that applies to uh, not just wealth. Um, but you know, particularly the wealthy, and so it's always been unclear exactly, you know, how they're, um, uh, you know, using the tax system. And, and now we know. And, and the judgment on the part of um, ProPublica was that uh, the public interest outweighed the privacy interests of these of these extraordinarily wealthy individuals. And I, I think that's reasonable. Yeah, and in this case, we found out, for example, and they they did something interesting. They said not relative to their income, but relative to their wealth, how much taxes did they pay? And it was an interesting analysis in that sense. We found out Warren Buffett is pay, paid about 0.1 percent. Uh, Jeff Bezos paid under one percent of it, uh, their wealth in that stretch of time. So you get this, and whereas, and to me, Ken, I, I thought the most interesting part was. Collectively, they'd made $1.1 trillion in 2018, those 25 guys. And that's the equivalent of 14.3 million Americans. And they paid 1.9 billion in taxes, the top 25 did. But collectively, the 14 million Americans paid $143 billion in taxes. So when you see a stat like that, it really does go to the public interest, which is my God. If you do that kind of analysis, you see how much more of the accumulated wealth of middle class people that our government takes as opposed to the rich. Yeah, nothing you do in terms of reporting 
uh, on what's going on here is going to be able to provide more insight and 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 be as much of a disadvantage to them um, as all the advantages that they enjoy uh, that allow them to hide their wealth and what they're doing. I mean, uh, you know, these wealthy individuals uh, go to great lengths to obscure, obfuscate. You know, as an investigative reporter, um, you know, I'm looking at uh, flight logs, things like that. Um, just to give you an example, there uh, a lot, lot of wealthy individuals will uh, buy LLCs. Um, for the express purpose of obfuscating uh, what their flight patterns and, and travel patterns are. Now, if you're an ordinary individual, you know, of modest wealth, you're not going to be able to do these kind of things. Uh, just to give you that uh, one example, but there's, you know, innumerable examples with respect to tax law that they're able to do to, to you know, use uh, chains of shell companies to hide where they're uh, moving money around. So they already enjoy greater privacy than uh, the general public does. I think in a case like this, um, it's not going to, um, you know, disadvantage them. Uh, uh, such that on balance, they're not already enjoying uh, more privacy than the rest of us do. Yeah, so at the same time, um, Brian Stelter is getting heat today for a very soft interview he did with Jen Psaki. Um, and you know, the, the question that he asked earlier um, when he asked her like, what is the press getting wrong about the Biden administration? <laughs> Jesus Christ. So Ken, is it me or or? Does the press seem infinitely softer on the Biden administration than they were on the Trump administration? Oh, absolutely, and I think some of that is that um, you know Trump was scandal prone, and and uh, I you know I don't know how to say this. I, I'm just gonna be straight with you. He had a whole lot more scandals than the Biden administration does. Now, does that mean that we shouldn't scrutinize the Biden administration as well? Of course not. Um, so you know that being the case, I, I do think that among the press core, there is an attitude of sort of um, PTSD from just. The, you know, light speed kind of uh, scandals that we that we you know flew through in the four years of the Trump administration. Now it's kind of like, well, we don't want to be you know overly harsh on this guy after you know we had all this other insanity. But that's exactly how we get into the insanity of the Trump administration in the first place is by not holding uh, you know the Democrats' feet to the fire such that uh, they can become effective leaders or um, at least you know brook some kind of response to these criticisms. And then people get angry, and then someone else like Trump comes in. So I think those two things are related. Yeah. So Ken, maybe I'm seeing it wrong. I'm asking this genuinely, right? But you're in Washington, and and you know other reporters, so you have a little bit better sense of it, right? So. It seems like the Biden administration, we've fallen back into the old pattern of having to respond to right wing critiques, whether they make sense or not. So they'll get over the last 24 hours, Kamala Harris has been very aggressively challenged by Lester Holt and others about, hey, how come you haven't done a photo op at the border? I mean, from a left wing perspective, who cares? It's literally a photo op. Who? Oh, you weren't physically at the border. And how, did, how does that affect policy? It's just so silly, right? But I'm not seeing a lot of coverage of left wing critique of Biden, right? I think Biden's administration is totally over. Manchin has torpedoed it, and probably Biden didn't doesn't mind. And I haven't seen almost any of that from the mainstream press. So, a, am I seeing that right? And b, is there any hope that the mainstream press will go? Oh yeah, maybe we should look at progressive critique of Biden. Yeah, unfortunately, you're 100 percent right, Jenk. Um, these you know left critiques are not being um, you know aired by these kind of mainstream outlets and and the reason that that's unfair isn't necessarily because you know I, I agree or disagree um, with, with those critiques but those these types of critiques are held by a broad swath of the general public so when you look at the border case that you mentioned how many what percent of the public wants to hear about that versus um, the you know majority including majority of Republicans who support uh, the uh, the uh, voter reform bill that Manchin essentially killed uh, with his announcement yesterday, uh, they found that actually half of Republicans support it, in addition to the you know overwhelming majority of Democrats. So clearly, it's not that there's a lack of interest on the part of the public. Uh, among media, I think that there's a sense that oh, you know, the stupid public wants to hear these kind of frivolous things, so we've got to talk about it. That's not really true. I don't think that certainly, insofar as we have evidence. A whole lot more people are interested in hearing about the PRO Act and hearing about um, uh, you know, voter, refor uh, voter reform legislation than are these kind of uh, frivolous topics that get a whole lot of airtime. So um, that raises a lot of very interesting questions. And you know, I could speculate as to uh, why they don't talk about these things. But they're doing a favor to Biden in the sense that now he doesn't have to respond to them because people don't know that there are these left 
criticisms if it's not reported in these mainstream outlets. Yeah, another like again, genuine question as to the feeling in, in DC. So when you talk about bipartisan, I mean to your point on the For the People Act in West Virginia has 71% popularity, including 66% popularity among Trump voters in West Virginia. And then when Manchin says he's blocking it to be bipartisan, I still see most of the outlets, if not all of the outlets in the mainstream press reporting it as if Manchin is being bipartisan. When it's the exact opposite, according to the polling, right? So do you see hope that that is going to turn around, that we're gonna break through because of social media and Twitter and all the uh, the strength that progressives have more online? Or no, it's not breaking through at all. Nope, 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 they're just gonna keep calling what the corporate agenda bipartisan agenda. Well, this is very much up in the air and that's what the conflict is now. And they have the rest of this month to pass this legislation. And as you alluded to earlier, if they don't, um, make some you know, fundamental adjustment to the filibuster. It seems very unlikely they'll be able to pass any sort of serious legislation uh, for the remainder of uh, President Biden's term. So um, it, I, I do wanna say that I, I, think, I don't think that this is a foregone conclusion yet. Um, uh, Manchin in the past has gone back and forth on all sorts of issues. He's the opposite of, <laughs> of somebody who uh, you know, is gonna have any sort of consistency. And you know, my boss, Ryan Grimm, he just had a story out today in which he uh, quotes a number of uh, high level uh, you know, Republican political operatives uh, and the way they're behaving and the beliefs they're operating under are, uh, is extreme anxiety that this could still happen. And that Manchin might change his mind under pressure from the very same groups you're describing, progressives um, and liberal Democrats. So um, I think that if you know, very powerful, well-connected Republicans are still worried about it, this game isn't over yet. Uh, and I don't think it is. Yeah, uh, here I'll make a prediction um, and I hate to say it, but uh, <laughs> I, I think Kristen Cinema is gonna flip to Republican. Um, and so just when Manchin might go in the right direction a little bit on some of these issues, if he does, uh, you're gonna lose Cinema anyway. Uh, and, and she's gonna single handedly torpedo this entire, like, do they, she missed the For the People Act. I'm sorry, for the, the January 6th commission vote. There's no reason for a Democrat to miss that vote. Uh, the right. only reason you'd miss it is if you're thinking of switching parties. Um, so, uh, iceberg straight ahead. <laughs> okay, let's see what happens. Um, all right, uh, Ken Klippenstein from The Intercept, uh, thank you. We appreciate you joining us. Great to be with you again. Thanks. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.